Here we go. And uh, today we have the pleasure of listening to Dr. Sharamajidi, who is Assistant Professor in Neurosurgery, Neurology, and Radiology here at Mount Sinai. He's Director of Cerebrovascular Services at Mount Sinai, Brooklyn. Um, you may be aware he's, he comes to us from Tehran, where he uh, completed his medical studies, and then he did neurology residency at George Washington University, a vascular neurology fellowship at the NIH, um, and then neuroendovascular fellowship here at Mount Sinai. He's very active in research with grants from multiple foundations and running numerous studies. Uh, and today he's going to give us an update on the uh, recent trials that have expanded indications for endovascular therapy for a thrombectomy. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so I will be talking about the uh, new expanding indication for endovascular thrombectomies uh, from the recent clinical trials that we had in the uh, past 12 months. I have no uh, relevant financial disclosure for this presentation. If we look at the latest AHA guideline on management acute ischemic stroke, which is from 2019, it says uh, thrombectomy is indicated for patients presenting with good baseline functional status with M1 or ICAT occlusion, with a disabling deficit with an edge stroke scale of six or higher, who have small uh, impact core within six hours, translated in uh, uh, aspects a score of six or higher. Uh, and in patient presenting beyond six hours, based on this guidelines, you need advanced imaging to evaluate salvageable brain tissue versus uh, impact core. And if it is a a uh, high ratio of salvageable brain tissue, then patient might be eligible for thrombectomy. And when we look at the guideline recommendation for basilar occlusion, as you see here, the uh, level of recommendation is that thrombectomy might be reasonable in basilar occlusion within six hours because we really don't have or didn't have any positive randomized clinical trial showing efficacy of thrombectomy and posterior circulation. However, that has changed with six positive clinical trials in 2022 that we will discuss today. So let's just start with basilar artery occlusion. 10% of all LVO strokes are basilar occlusion. It is associated with very poor outcome with up to 80% of the patient being uh, uh, completely disabled or dead. Uh, by 90 days. Uh, up to 2022, we had two negative clinical trials which failed to show any benefit of thrombectomy over medical management. And if you look at the history of bas uh, basilar artery thrombectomy, perhaps one of the first thr documented thrombectomy uh, series came uh, from Germany in 1976 uh, uh, when 17 patients were evaluated. Uh, as you see the outcome here, 17 patients uh, diagnosed with bas uh, basilar artery thrombosis were treated at our clinic. 10 patients died within two weeks. Six patients survived more than six weeks, but less than three months. Only one patient survived at a one-year period. Uh, and all patients had severe neurological deficit and died from secondary complications from uh, stroke. But fast forward, uh, just last year, we had a Baochi trial from uh, China, which evaluated patient presenting with basilar artery occlusion from six to 24 hours from last known normal. They randomized in a one-to-one -one ratio to thrombectomy versus medical management. If you look at the inclusion criteria in uh, basilar artery occlusion within six to 24 hours, initial disabling deficit with an eye stroke scale of 10 or higher, baseline functional status should be good and a patient should be independent at his or her baseline. However, important exclusion criteria are posterior circulation aspects a score of less than six or PONS midbrain index of three or higher. Let's just quickly review that. Posterior circulation aspects a score looking into the 
evidence of early ischemic changes in posterior circulation. It's a score of zero to 10, 10 is a normal brain. And as you see here, you review a different part of the brain and you subtract one point if you see any evidence of early ischemic changes in either in thalamus, occipital lobe or cerebellum. However, when it comes to uh, midbrain and pons, because they're assumed as a, a prime real estate, you uh, subtract two points for any evidence of early ischemic changes there. So 10 is normal. And if the patient had posterior aspects of less than six, we're gonna be excluded from this trial. And PONS midbrain index is also very sensitive uh, uh, screening tool. Uh, essentially, it gives a point of uh, zero to four to PONS and midbrain in each left and right side. You review that if there is a evidence of a stroke in one half of PONS, you subtract one. In both sides, you subtract two. The same thing for midbrain. So therefore, uh, patients were only included in this trial if they had a small burden of a stroke in brain stem. This is the, uh, the table of the uh, study, which is showing 110 patients randomized into thrombectomy, 107 patients in medical management. As you see, they all had very severe disabling stroke, but more importantly, they had very favorable stroke burden with posterior circulation aspects of eight, uh, median, and also PANS midbrain index of one, meaning very small stroke burden in brainstem. And when we look at the result here, as you see there in the distribution of 90-day modified ranking scale, there was higher rate of independent ambulation at 90 days, 46% versus 24, higher rate of functional independence, uh, almost three times higher, and also uh, associated with higher rate of symptomatic ICH, 8.8% versus 2.2. So this, is, this was a very first randomized clinical trial showing benefit of thrombectomy and vascular occlusion in carefully selected patients with a small stroke burden. Parallel to that, we had another uh, uh, similar study, again from China, uh, attention trial, uh, this one enrolled patient within 12 hours from last known normal with basilar occlusion, again with disabling stroke on uh, admission, good baseline functional status, same criteria, small stroke burden on uh, admission. As you see here, again, a little larger sample size, 226 patient within thrombectomy are 114 patient in control are, as you see, they again, very favorable stroke burden posterior circulation aspect nine uh, and 10 in uh, thrombectomy and control arm. They had over 93% uh, uh, successful recanalization with thrombectomy. Uh, and, and we see here the outcome, higher rate of independent ambulation, meaning as a modified ranking scale score of zero to three, uh, 46% and thrombectomy arm versus only 23% in uh, uh, medical management. Uh, similarly, uh, higher rate of functional independence at 90 days, uh, three times higher in thrombectomy arm versus 11% in medical management. Again, second positive clinical trial showing efficacy of thrombectomy in carefully selected patients with basilar artery occlusion. Now let's switch to uh, anterior circulation, large core anterior circulation uh, stroke. As we know, at least 20% of patients with acute ischemic stroke and, and LVO present with large infarct core. Their current AHA guideline, infarct core more than 50 cc or uh, many patients more than 70 cc, they will be excluded from uh, they're not eligible for thrombectomy because higher rate of reperfusion injury and, and likely utility of recanalization. So they have been historically excluded from uh, DON and uh, diffuse uh, three uh, clinical trials. However, in uh, recent year, we had 
four independent randomized clinical trials specifically targeted this, uh, this patient population and evaluated the uh, possible efficacy and safety of thrombectomy in this uh, group. The first one coming from Japan, Rescue Japan Limit, was a clinical trial published last year in the New England Journal of Medicine. They enrolled patient 18 year old or older with NI stroke scale of six uh, or higher on admission, good baseline functional status presenting with ICAT or M1 occlusion and with a large infarct core. Uh, as, as we discussed, current AHA guideline doesn't recommend a, a thrombectomy for aspect less than six. They targeted this patient population within six hours from symptom onset. But let's, let's just uh, do a quick review of aspect score. An anterior circulation aspect score is a score on middle uh, cerebral artery territory, score of zero to 10. Again, 10 is normal uh, brain without any evidence of early ischemic changes. Uh, and then you have six cortical areas, M1 to M6, uh, plus insula, and two points for uh, internal capsule uh, and basal ganglia uh, as well. So you review all these 10 area and you subtract one point for, uh, if you see any evidence of early ischemic changes in any of this area. So they, they enroll patients with lower uh, aspects to endovascular therapy versus medical management. Total of 203 patients were enrolled, 100 in each group. Mean age was 76 year old. Median NI stroke scale was 22 in both group. Uh, median aspect score was three in uh, uh, EBT group, uh, showing significant stroke burden. Uh, and we, when we look at the infarct volume, 94 and 110, very large in our core patients were randomized in this trial. This is the technical aspects of the thrombectomy. They use direct aspiration uh, plus stent retrieval in 78% of the cases, and successful reperfusion was achieved in 86% of the time. And Tiki 3, which is a complete 100% reperfusion, was achieved in 43%. Uh, you need to pay attention for this uh, magic number, uh, 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 successful recanalization over 80% is always a very healthy number. And when we look at the outcome, the distribution of 90 days MRS uh, score, uh, we see a significant shift toward left to better outcome under endovascular uh, therapy. As you see, 90 days independent ambulation in this patient population, large core infarct was three times, almost three times higher, 31% uh, versus only 12% um, uh, in control group. So this was achieved uh, with no difference in the rate of symptomatic ICH, although the rate of any ICH was higher among EBT group. There was no difference in the 90 days mortality or the compressive hemicrany. Uh, 27% uh, of the patient in each group received IV TPA. This is important because it shows in patients with large infarct core, even when they have IV TPA, when we reperfuse them, doesn't necessarily increase the rate of uh, symptomatic uh, hemorrhage. So the second uh, large core uh, trial to discuss is Angel Aspects from China, again published uh, uh, in the last year, uh, targeting large core infarct, patients uh, criteria 18 to 80, baseline functional status zero to one of MRS, disabling deficits on presentation. And this time they expanded their randomization uh, time to within 24 hours from symptom onset. Again, with M1 occlusion or ICA T occlusion with a large infarct core with uh, uh, assessed by aspects of three to five or uh, uh, infarct core volume with advanced imaging, such as CT perfusion, MR perfusion with infarct core of uh, 70 to 100. They enrolled 456 patients, 231 in endovascular arm, 225 in medical arm. Uh, median and eye stroke scale was 16. Median aspect score was three, again showing that 
they all had very large infarct volume. Median infarct volume in uh, each group was 60 to 63. And the technical aspects, again, similar uh, uh, technique here, uh, aspiration plus stent retriever, 50% of the cases. Uh, again, this is this is studies from China with higher rate of intracranial uh, ICAD, as you see, uh, uh, higher rate of intracranial angioplasty and stenting, 18%. Successful rate of thrombectomy, again, above uh, 80%. 19% of them were uh, TK3, and 28% of the patient in each group received uh, IV thrombolytic therapy. And when we look at the outcome, again, 90, distribution of the 90-day modified ranking scale is showing significant shift toward the better outcome under uh, thrombectomy arm. A 90-day modified ranking scale of zero to two meaning functional independence at 90 days was three times higher among thrombectomy times compared to medical management. 90 day uh, uh, independent ambulation was also significantly higher, 47% versus 33%. But I also want you to pay attention here that these are very large core infarct. You still see very high rate of 90 day mortality over 20% in each group as these are uh, severe stroke. Uh, despite that, thrombectomy showed significant benefit in improving outcome in this patient group. Similar to the prior uh, study from Japan here, this trial showed no difference in the rate of symptomatic ICH, despite relatively high rate of acute intracranial stenting, which means starting the patient on dual antiplatelet therapy acutely, and also 27% rate of IV thrombolytic therapy on board uh, with acute reperfusion didn't really cause significant increase in the rate of uh, hemorrhagic uh, transformation. There was no difference in the rate of 90 days mortality and decompressive hemicraniectomy uh, as well. 14% uh, of this patient had uh, aspects of less than three, meaning like majority, massive amount of uh, and, uh, a stroke burden, but it's still uh, patient benefited from thrombation. The third uh, trial was uh, SELECT-2 from North America and Europe, uh, a similar inclusion criteria uh, with uh, occlusion of uh, ACAT or M1, with disabling deficit uh, on arrival and last known normal within 24 hours with good baseline functional status. Again, as, uh, aspects score of three to five and infarct core of more than 50. The difference that this trial had, they didn't have any upper limit. Uh, they could have enrolled any patient, uh, any uh, amount of infarct core, as long as it was less than five of aspects. As SELECT-2 uh, enrolled total of 352 patients, 178 with an endovascular arm and 174 within medical management. Uh, median age was 66. Uh, median NI stroke scale score was 19 in each group. Median aspect score was four. And as you see the uh, infarct core volume, infarct volume based on advanced imaging was higher than the past two trial, 81 in endovascular arm and 79 CC in the medical management. And 20% of the patient within the EVT arm got TPA versus 17% in medical management. And when we look at the, uh, their outcome, the primary outcome was functional independence at 90 days was three times higher uh, in endovascular arm compared to medical management, a single digit rate of functional independence was uh, increased to 20% with endovascular therapy. 90, 90 days independence ambulation was also significantly higher. Again, here you see uh, in the MRS distribution, uh, the rate of mortality 
overall was very high in this trial because they included much sicker patients with higher infarct volume on CT scan with no higher limit with almost 40% 40, 40 uh, mortality at 90 days in each group. However, this is still translated into uh, benefits with acute reperfusion in this patient population. Surprisingly, the, the rate of hemorrhagic transformation, symptomatic ICH was very low in, in this trial, less than 1%, uh, uh, which is lower than some of the earlier trials of with higher aspect score. Uh, this is again is against the long belief in the stroke community that the largest infarct burden when you reperfuse, there is high risk of symptomatic reperfusion. This trial is uh, showing opposite evidence to that. So no, no difference in the rate of 90-day mortality. And interestingly, 42% of the patient in each group are, are over seven year old, showing benefit of uh, reperfusion in large core infarct in this uh, age group. 33% of the patient had infarct volume over 100 uh, ml, which is extremely large in far core, they, they still showed benefit of from uh, uh, reperfusion. And 12% of this patient had infarct core of bigger than 150 cc, but there's still evidence of EVT. And more interestingly, because they were using advanced imaging, uh, there were a subgroup of the patient that CT perfusion and MR perfusion did not show any mismatch between penumbra and, which is uh, salvageable tissue, and infarct core. With zero mismatch, patient enrolled in thrombectomy, they still had better outcome with reperfusion. This really uh, revolutionized what we thought for almost a decade of what infarct core, the definition of infarct core and, uh, and salvageable brain tissue would be. There's also a fourth uh, uh, clinical trial called TESLA in the United States. This hasn't published yet under review, but the, there was a recent presentation uh, on that. And this, uh, and I included here, this is a fourth positive clinical trial of large uh, infarct core. This is a, a meta-analysis of the, this four clinical trials uh, uh, collectively uh, enrolled more than 1,200 patients with large infarct core aspect score of two to five. And as you see here, uh, uh, there is benefits of thrombectomy in this group causing, uh, 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 led to reduced disability, uh, increased rate of independent ambulation, and increased rate of excellent functional outcome, meaning 90 days MRS of zero to two uh, in this high volume impact burden. So uh, if I want to uh, summarize, now based on this six uh, clinical trials, now we know that in patient presenting with baseline MRS of zero uh, M to one with ICAT or M1 occlusion within 24 hours from symptom onset, EVT and the vascular thrombectomy is indicated if aspect is more than one, which essentially almost every patient presenting with stroke if they don't have any hemorrhagic transformation. No further imaging is required for decision making. However, the aspect, what we see in the aspect should really dictate how we uh, uh, talk to the patient and uh, family about the uh, magnitude of benefit. As you saw in some of those trials, the large core infarct is still associated with almost 40% of uh, uh, mortality. So that has to be discussed with the patient when we are uh, offering thrombectomy for large core infarct. But nevertheless, thrombectomy shouldn't be uh, withheld from this patient population. And when it comes to basilar artery occlusion, with this two clinical trial, now we know that EVT is indicated if patient has a small 
infarct burden with posterior circulation aspects more than six, and more importantly, smaller infarct burden in uh, brain stem. So really no further imaging needed, no advanced imaging needed, and patient can uh, should be offered uh, re reperfusion. But now let's just discuss, see what happened to the stroke uh, less than eight years ago, stroke was completely a medical disease. Now it has transformed to entirely surgical disease with the most powerful treatment in, in medicine. Stroke was the uh, third leading cause of mortality in 2011. Now it's dropped to uh, fifth because of the, uh, this treatment uh, uh, for them. But, so if we look at the history of stroke, acute ischemic stroke, in 1995 was when we had the NINDS IV TPA trial, positive trial showing benefits of IV thrombolytic therapy for a stroke, and then it became a standard of care. However, it took two decades from 1995 to uh, 2015 until we uh, 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 we uh, demonstrated benefit of thrombectomy. The, perhaps that first decade was like uh, dedicated to patient education, uh, a lot of work on door to needle time, time uh, patient uh, education of time, uh, uh, timeless brain, and also device development and advances and technology, which enabled us to run some successful clinical trial, uh, led to five positive clinical trial in 2015, showing benefit of thrombectomy for the first time. And that was also associated with emphasis on patient selection, triage, stroke system of care, streamlining the patient uh, uh, timeline from the stroke diagnosis to offering the eligible therapy. And from 2015 to 2018 was the, the time that uh, there were more uh, focus on advanced imaging, identifying the core and salvageable brain tissue. And then that's, that's what we had uh, done and the FUSE 3 trials showing that in carefully selected patient uh, with advanced imaging, we might be able to find more patients eligible for thrombectomy who will benefit from that. And then after 2018, it was essentially just challenging our uh, traditional thoughts of salvageable brain tissue versus uh, infarct for really thinking out of the box, really pushing the limits uh, on large core infarct, uh, which actually led to this uh, four positive clinical trial that I presented to you. So in terms of the device de development, if we'll look at uh, what we had in early days, when we had negative trials like IMS3, FRAG2, uh, our, our complication rates and intraop uh, perforation was much higher and the reperfusion uh, rate was much lower than 80% that I mentioned earlier. So it was ranging between from 40 to 60% in clinical trial. That's why uh, we failed to show benefits of thrombectomy. However, after 2015, as, as you know, more dedicated uh, devices uh, were developed for a stroke, uh, uh, providing us with a safe navigation to intracranial circulation, much safer thrombectomy, whether with stent retriever or larger bore aspiration caster, which enabled us to really reach the clot safer, take the clot out faster, and don't cause any complication. That was the te uh, technology side of really achieving positive clinical trial after 20 years of uh, try and error. And, and, and I will try to... Uh, give an example of the, the patient that we had uh, here, just showing uh, the impact of technological advances and also improvement in system of care and stroke triage and treatment. Uh, this is a patient presented uh, to Mount Sinai Morningside uh, in May, 2011. 
61 year old gentleman uh, with aphasia, right sided deficit, NI stroke scale of 18. Normal baseline functional status presented within six hours from symptom onset. Uh, CTA is showing left M1 occlusion. Uh, uh, CT head is showing perhaps some uh, subacute infarct in the right uh, occipital area with a little hemorrhagic transformation, but no real ischemic changes in the left MCA territory. Since 2011, patient was taken to thrombectomy. Uh, at that time, the devices that were available was uh, 041 catheter with a separator, uh, was used with multiple try, uh, and also administration of intraarterial TPA. EVT uh, thrombectomy time was two hours and a half, um, but eventually they achieved successful thrombectomy and patient had uh, amazing recovery from stroke and was discharged home. This is January, 2022. The same patient presented to Sinai system again. Now he's 72 year old was diagnosed with AFib, however, not so compliant with the AFib therapy. Again, with a disabling deficit, this time MRS is one within four hours from last on normal, not eligible for thrombectomy uh, to, for uh, IVTPA because of uh, being on uh, uh, AFib therapy. And the CTA is showing again left, one occlusion, uh, left M1 occlusion. Here I have his CAT scan from decade ago, 2011, when he presented the left arm, now this one in 2022 with another left M1 occlusion. The, his CAT scan uh, is showing some, uh, uh, some early ischemic changes in the left MCA territory, some encephalomalacia from his old stroke 10 years ago in the right occipital area and also left MCA territory. Uh, we took him uh, for thrombectomy. This time, uh, in part where the, uh, the clot burden was higher, as you see on the left side, there was an ICA T occlusion plus M1 occlusion. We did two passes of thrombectomy. We have more advanced uh, uh, devices th uh, these days uh, for a larger bore aspiration catheter. Let's use the entire IVT time was only 21 minutes versus. Uh, 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 two hours and a half, 10, 10 years before. And patient was discharged home with 90 days MRS of one. And also the team received uh, this note um, uh, from the hospital. I think this is just highlighting how much we have come and advanced the stroke workflow and system of care in terms of door to imaging, door to decision making, door to angio suite arrival and reperfusion. In this patient, because of stroke pre-notification, door to stroke code was zero, patient just arrived and the stroke team was waiting for him in uh, ED. And door, uh, door to IR suite was only 12 minutes uh, and imaging was obtained right on arrival. And uh, from the time the patient hit the uh, ED to groin puncture was only 31 minutes. And as I said earlier, preperfusion was achieved in 21 minutes. In the entire time in the hospital before uh, preperfusion was less than uh, one hour, only 52 minutes, compared to uh, over two hours uh, just for thrombectomy time. So this, this, uh, uh, besides advances in technology, really translated to uh, uh, improved uh, stroke care in the nation in a large scale. Speaking of advanced technology, uh, these are the example of how the new devices has made uh, cases like this easier for us to navigate and to repair fuse in a timely manner. As we know, time is still, uh, brain earlier reperfusion is associated with better outcome. These are the anatomies that you either have had to go to, uh, with direct carotid stick in anterior circulation or on the left side in the posterior circulation like this, you had to spend hours to reach the clot and reperfuse. 
But uh, in today's uh, technology, these cases are, have become much streamlined uh, and safe and uh, effective. So, so what will happen beyond uh, 2023? Let's see this, the same gentleman, because it doesn't look like he's complying with his AFib treatment. He might present again uh, in 10 years when he is 82 year old uh, with another monoclusion. Uh, what would be the stroke setup and system of care in 10 years? We don't, can't say for sure, but what we are sure, we won't be using the same system that, that we used for him last year. Perhaps there's gonna be more uh, uh, information on clot composition, more utilization of arterial uh, or, uh, artificial intelligence, robotic surgery, and advanced imaging and system of care. Perhaps patient will get a CTA on, in the ambulance, and based on his clinical uh, history and the CTA finding, uh, AI will be able to give us some information about potential clot composition and will provide some suggestion on device selection and the best approach for his thrombectomy. So it's very fascinating to see how technology has, has advanced in this regard. But when, but when we look at the big picture, still there a lot of work needs to be done. More than 600,000 acute ischemic stroke is happening in the nation every year. Based on the definition of the large vessel occlusion, the, uh, the rate of LVO or medium vessel occlusion is up to 50%. However, based on the data, only 40,000 EVT were performed in the United States two years ago. Therefore, we, we still need to do more community education, expanding the availability of thrombectomy to underserved area, and also working on a stroke uh, system of care to really uh, providing this uh, the most effective treatment in medicine to more eligible patients. Uh, the future directions, uh, EBT in patients with existing disability. As you know, all these clinical trials have only included patients with uh, good functional status at baseline. Uh, we, we still don't have level one clinical trial evidence for benefits of thrombectomy in, in this population. But uh, similarly, uh, EBT in patient with mild deficit coming with presenting with large vessel occlusion, but with uh, an ice shock scale of less than six, or EBT in patient with distal vessel occlusion. These are the three uh, frontiers that you will hear in the following years. Uh, there is a tested clinical trial uh, will be uh, started soon. Dr. Marco is leading in a national level and Mount Sinai will be the site. We'll study exactly EVT in patient with uh, existing disability. Similarly, there is an ongoing clinical trial called Endolo is evaluating efficacy and safety of EVT in patient with low NIH stroke scale. And last, for this solo occlusion, we have two ongoing randomized clinical trials currently evaluating safety and ef efficacy of uh, uh, thrombectomy in this patient population. So there's still more to do, but very exciting time to be in a stroke care. With that, I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sharam, for an excellent presentation. Um, any comments from any of the, the residents? I guess I, uh, I'm kind of curious if I can ask a quick question. Um, what do you think is the mechanism uh, of, of you know, benefit? Do you think that what we're seeing on CT with a low aspect score, that some of that brain, it's actually, we call it infarct, but it's not actually completely, completely infarcted? Or do you think that you know, there's penumbra around the area that is hypodense? So basically, you know, what, what can you actually call that hypodensity on CT, on the initial CT? Do you think that's truly infarcted or have people looked at, you know, post-procedural MRI um, to see what, what actually was infarcted compared to the... Um, Is a, yeah, that's a great question. We know, uh, you know, that based on the MRI studies, there is at least 50% chance of... Uh, 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 DWI reversal after reperfusion. 
So what we see in the CT scan is not infarct. It is just uh, early ischemic changes. Uh, the definition that we traditionally had for infarct based on the cerebral blood flow, cerebral blood volume, and mean transit time has to change. There's actually massive opportunity here to redefine what we traditionally thought is infarct core. Uh, even before this clinical, what led to this to, uh, multiple clinical trial was multiple uh, independent studies showing reversal of what we thought is infarct core in after reperfusion. So what well, uh, infarct core yet to be defined. Karam, I thought that was really an amazing talk. Um, would it be okay if I just shared something? Because there's something I thought you were going to emphasize that you touched on but didn't emphasize. And it was something when I was presenting a vision for the future of neurosurgery um, that I presented to the board of trustees thinking about where, where we're headed. Um, I'm not sure if you presented this, but I'll, in addition to technology advancing, systems of care and skill of the vascular team, um, which is an amazing vascular team, has advanced. Um, and that is shown in these data provided to me by Jay, um, that not only are you doing more interventions by a factor of two than any other peer institution, um, but it's more likely to return to independence if you're treated by a Mount Sinai team member than anything else. So, and that is not just the skill of the surgeon, but also the system that you guys have put it in place. Uh, ha having said that, we're still only able to perform thrombectomies at a little more than half of our actual hospitals. Um, and that's with you guys covering four hospitals at a time, every time you're on call, every fourth night. So with you guys on call and doing the most that you can, we're still not covering it. Um, and this and this is just a, an example of what's really true worldwide, this slide provided by Dr. Kellner, that even in places where there's maximum access, it's still less than 50%. Uh, and you've pointed out repeatedly that, that time is brain. So what I thought you were gonna really focus on was the, the concept of remote treatment. Um, because I, I think that in the next five to 10 years, and here you see our very own Brandon and Chi with Tomo, um, where, where I really think we have opportunity is in the remote treatment so that our, uh, our patients can be treated uh, using a simulator basically that is operated remotely. And I may be underemphasizing the technical challenge, but there's a massive need that this would meet. Um, and I'd be interested in, in your further comments on this because you've obviously thought pretty deeply about it. Yeah, thank you very much for the comment. Yeah, absolutely. There's going to be a massive role for uh, robotic in the decades to come, in uh, addition to AI uh, and the system that we use, plus class uh, composition, uh, uh, as I was trying to say in an underserved area, all this information can be used to really dictate based on the patient anatomy, which was seen in the CTA patient arc, what axis should be used, what catheter size you use, and what a thrombectomy technique should be utilized for this patient with this history and demographic. Uh, and then to give this to a robot uh, 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 to deliver. Dr. Mako, do you have any wis wisdom you can impart? Yeah, I, I think this is, you know, absolutely the future. You know, the, the gap in care isn't, people tend to think it's, you know, in the faraway rural areas. And that's not really where the, the issues are. Um, 
know, there's always going to be 15 to 20 percent of the U.S. population that just lives outside of uh, sort of access to major trauma or stroke care stuff. But there's tremendous gaps in uh, support and care in suburban areas and small cities and things like that. And so this is this these kinds of technologies can make that kind of difference. And, you know, Shram did a great job explaining where we are and how we've gotten here, but there's a long way to go. We're just at the tip of the iceberg and there's every expectation that um, twice as many thrombectomies could be performed five years from now as there are now. And uh, and so that's kind of what, that's what we're working towards. We're, you know, I, in, I tell people I got very, the thing that got me really excited about neurosurgery was watching a emergent EVD placed in a young guy with a posterior fossa mass that he was like completely unresponsive and the EVD went in and he was completely better. And that was the first time in medicine I saw like black and white, this person's going to die. And now instead this person's going to live. And, uh, and so if that kind of care is what got you excited about neurosurgery. It's hard not to get excited about this care because th that's what this is. That's what thrombectomy is. I mean, you saw that graphic over half of the patients that we treat get back to being independent um, versus being pretty devastated. So that's, that's why we do it. I hope it, you know, it's easy sometimes as a, someone training in neurosurgery to sort of see that as something other, but it's really not. It's right at the heart of the kind of care we're exactly specialized to provide. Yeah, what, what, what strikes me like more than at least, depending on the uh, definition, more than 200,000 LVOs happening in the nation every year, but we only uh, perform just uh, 40,000 from victims. So there's just a lot needs to be done and just really patient education, community education, interdisciplinary educations of other teams of like, we have the most powerful treatment available and shouldn't be withheld. Great stuff, amazing. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting how, um stroke trials were negative for a while and they were looking at the wrong population not exactly at the right population and maybe the technology hadn't caught up and the systems of care hadn't caught up but then once we got it with a really focused group then we could methodically add on to that as the technology improved and the systems of care improved and made it possible to effectively treat a larger population of patients and now it it seems like they're are few fewer and and very few exclusions now for patients coming in who have a large vessel occlusion it's kind of the opposite of ich ich started really broad and tried to get a positive trial with really broad indications and that's still kind of happening actually well that was those were lessons learned though chris the you know, the initial, those first the IMS3 uh, synthesis expansion um, trials that were published in England Journal in 2013 were, they were not only broad, but I mean, they were also ludicrous. Everyone knew they were beforehand. They didn't identify if there was even a large vessel occlusion for the trials, but it was more of a general applied all stroke. But but the field got reactionary and we really contracted and we really targeted um, very specific populations to try to maximize the ability to show benefit. And it turns out what we thought we knew before those trials were negative was true, which is that the effect size is just absolutely tremendous with these therapies. And um and so that's the case. Um so I think it's I think it's good for it's good for any for any of you pursuing research and you know whether it's a specific spine disease or something else to to tumor to create pretty hetero homogeneous cohorts to evaluate you know the specificity of whatever uh, intervention you're providing um and then you and then branch out i do think that's a bit more of a track record of success to some degree i 
And I think we'll end on that. There you go. Those are true words of wisdom. All I right. You can squeeze homogeneous into a sentence. It's worth it. So. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Great, guys. Good job, Sean. Thank you, everyone. Good job, Sean.